This is Upton's Hill in Arlington County, and today it's one of the NVRPA's most popular recreational spots. But during the Civil War, it was strategically important to both the Confederate and Union armies. The hill's elevation, 410 feet above sea level, and its proximity to Washington made it an ideal base back then for spying, signaling, and controlling the surrounding terrain. Early in the war, the Union had occupied Upton's Hill as part of the defense of the capital. But in July 1861, after the first battle of Bull Run, the Confederates held the hill briefly. While they had the hill, the Confederates used the old Quaker gun trick to fool the Union Army. Big logs painted black and placed as if cannon, making the hill appear impenetrable. In September 1861, the Confederates left the hill to regroup with the larger southern force in Manassas. The Union soon reoccupied Upton's Hill. The troops turned the fine home of Charles Upton into a barracks. They cut down the trees in the fruit orchard. They built a masonry fort and called it Fort Ramsey, which served as the Union's base of operations in the region. By war's end, the Union had built a tall observation tower atop Upton's Hill to serve in line-of-sight communication with the Washington Monument and other signaling stations in the region. Fort Ramsey was at the technological forefront, maintaining telegraph connection with the Union Army headquarters and later with a broader regional telegraph network. Upton's Hill was written into history in 1862 after the prominent abolitionist and poet Julia Ward Howe attended a troop review at Fort Ramsey with the governor of Massachusetts and some friends. When the review was cut short by a nearby skirmish, Howe took a slow carriage ride back to Washington, all the while listening to the marching troops singing the popular tune, John Brown's Body. A friend suggested she write new lyrics for the song in honor of what she'd experienced at the troop review. I went to bed that night as usual and slept, according to my wont, quite soundly. I awoke in the gray of the morning twilight, and as I lay waiting for the dawn, the long lines of the desired poem began to twine themselves together. Having thought out all the stanzas, I said to myself, I must get up and write these verses down, lest I fall asleep again and forget them. The new song was the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which was first published on the front page of the Atlantic Monthly in February 1862. After the Civil War, it became one of the country's most sung patriotic songs.